Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. In recent years, without doubt Michoacan has become one of the key states in Mexico's drug war. Traditionally, it's always been a hotspot for the cultivation of illegal narcotics, primarily the growth of weed dating back to the 60s and 70s. However, in recent years, the state has become known for the creation of harder and more deadly drugs such as heroin and crystal meth. Poverty-stricken farmers across the state have had to resort to the growth of poppies to harvest opium, earning pennies on the dollar, barely enough to get by as they are relentlessly squeezed by the operating cartels in the area. Michoacan has always been an agricultural hotbed in Mexico, not just in relation to illegal drugs. The state is known in particular for the growth of lemons, limes and avocados, as well as its timber industry, all of which have turned into lucrative industries in recent years. You may ask, why don't law-abiding farmers just stick to the cultivation of such crops? Well, the reality is, Michoacan is a state in which cartels have infiltrated themselves into everyday life. They have turned their hand to perfectly legal industries via illegal means. Across Michoacan, farmers of avocados, limes and lemons have been effectively turned into slaves for the cartels. The farmers are threatened by criminal gangs and are shaken down for extortionate protection fees which results in the farmers' profits plummeting, keeping them in abject poverty. Farm workers across the state have been targeted by cartels for a number of years, dating back to the 2000s when the state was controlled by La Familia Michoacana and then Los Caballeros Templarios, aka the Knights Templar. Farming in Michoacan ultimately has become an extremely dangerous profession, with cases of murder against farm workers in the state occurring on a regular basis. Cartels have even turned their hand at farming. Gangs such as CJNG, Carteles Unidos and El Migaladas have been exposed for being involved in the illegal timber industry. According to a study by the University of Guadalajara, illegal logging is one of the fastest growing criminal economies in Mexico, with 70% of wood cut down between 2017 and 2019 lacking proper permits. In 2019, the amount of forest destroyed was equivalent to an area twice the size of Mexico City. In 2020, Mexico lost 127,000 hectares of forest, a 12% increase on the previous year. The study revealed how gangs operate in western Mexican states of Nayarit, Jalisco, Colima and Michoacan. Once they select an area of interest, they make a low offer to the proprietor of the land. If said offer is rebuffed or rejected, the gang will then violently take over. Much of this deforestation is also linked to the avocado industry, known as green gold. Avocados are in high demand worldwide and criminal groups are extorting producers and stealing shipments. A common tactic used by cartels is to clear the forest, sell the timber and then grow avocado trees in its place, contributing to deforestation. For the best part of two decades, cartels in Michoacan have intermingled themselves with the lives of everyday citizens and have victimised them at every turn, resulting in a sense of growing resentment towards governments and police in Michoacan. Due to a lack of protection and law and order, many citizens of small communities have bravely banded together and formed their own defence groups, defending their villages and towns from the invading cartels who aim to strip communities of their resources like a bunch of locusts. In many cases, these self-defence groups have actually been more effective than police in deterring cartel activity in certain towns and villages. Self-defence groups, or auto-defences as they're called in Mexico, are ultimately a damning indictment on the fat cats in government, whose job it is to maintain law and order and to create a safe and prosperous environment for the citizens of Mexico. Auto-defences are usually created by farmers and business owners in local towns and villages, where they band together armed with basic weaponry such as shotguns and hunting rifles, creating convoys to patrol their towns and villages looking for cartel activity, which, if they spot, it's on site. 
They will then often take higher tech weaponry from dead cartel members to improve their arsenal over time. Many auto defences throughout Michoacan and across Mexico have actually been a success and have indeed kept small, local communities safe. While some auto defences have been a success, others have sadly become corrupted and turned into the very same thing that they were initially fighting against. Sometimes, auto defences are so effective in clearing out cartels from their towns or villages that they eventually take over the hustles and illegal activities that the cartels left behind, such as extortion, robbery, and the production of drugs. One of the most famous examples of a gang with auto defensive roots would be that of Los Viagras, a small but vicious cartel who operate in Michoacan, primarily in the Tierra Caliente region. The gang were formed in 2014, initially under the guise of being a vigilante-type group who were out to get the then leader of the Knights Templar cartel, Servando Gomez Martinez, aka La Tuta. They received great public support as La Tuta and his gang were notorious for victimising innocent people. In fact, shortly after starting my channel, a lady with roots in Michoacan contacted me in relation to her time spent living in the state where she claimed that the Knights Templar cartel held such influence in certain towns and villages that citizens would have to ask for their permission to build on land, to hire out venues for weddings, as well as having to pay various forms of protection fees to the cartel. She also stated that Knights Templar were infamous for what she called Irk Squads, where cartel members would very often barge into the homes of random families and then essentially kidnap the most attractive female of that family before either nuclearing them or forcing them to be in a relationship with certain cartel members. Although not spoken about all that much, the Knights Templar cartel were one of the most barbaric and degenerate criminal gangs that Michoacan has ever seen. So, it's no wonder that initially, Los Viagras were supported by locals as they claimed to be fighting for the people against the Knights Templar. Servando Gomez Martinez, aka La Tuta, the leader of the Knights Templar cartel, was then arrested in early 2015, and the veil of being a self-defense group would slip from Los Viagras as they became a fully-fledged cartel who would go on to become heavily involved in the meth industry, and they went on to develop a reputation of being one of the most violent criminal organizations in Michoacan. Most people were made aware of the gang in 2018, when they released a gruesome viral video titled No Mercy in Mexico, also known as the Guerrero Flaying, where they murdered two people on camera. Interestingly enough, the two murdered in the video allegedly belonged to a gang named the Guerrero Guards, who also seemed to have originated as a quasi-self-defense group. El Miguelada, aka Miguel Angel Galagos Godoy, a name who has been very frequently mentioned on the channel in recent weeks, is also alleged to have had ties with several auto defensive groups over the years. Miguel Angel Galagos Godoy runs a small but powerful group named after himself, El Miguelada's, also known as the Zicaran Cartel, who mainly operate in the cities of Zicaran and La Huacana and he is heavily involved in the meth business, as well as legal trades such as agriculture. He has been in the trafficking business for at least a couple of decades, and has ties back to the original La Familia Michoacana cartel, who dominated Michoacan in the 90s and the 2000s. He would also go on to join the Knights Templar cartel in the early 2010s, but left due to internal disagreements. As a result, he allegedly funded auto defences to essentially become his personal hit squads against the Knights Templar cartel. Following the fall of the Knights Templar, it's believed El Miguelada then formed an alliance with CJNG, however, he would then leave the organisation due to unknown reasons, and would go on to form his own criminal organisation. Late 2023 marked a new battle in Michoacan, as CJNG declared war on Miguel Angel Galagos Godoy. Despite CJNG's heavy presence in Michoacan, the state has become a clusterfuck for the organisation, as they are also at war with several other local cartels, including Carteles Unidos, Villa Abuelo Cartel, and La Nueva Familia Michoacana. 
As well as being at war on multiple fronts, CJNG also have a lack of support from law enforcement as well as other governmental officials, as many are already on the payroll of other local cartels. Most importantly however, CJNG are generally despised in many parts of Michoacan by locals, which is an important factor as to why CJNG have not been able to take control of Michoacan state. More localized cartels have done a much better job in regards to propaganda, implementing the hearts and minds strategy and winning over favor from the locals. El Migalada in particular is actually well liked in the areas in which his gang operate, as Miguel Angel Galagos Godoy also owns land and farms that offer jobs to locals, and he is also respected due to going against the Knights Templar cartel back in the day. He also has local government and law enforcement in his pocket, which offers him a further layer of protection. Despite CJNG being extremely good at reporting their apparent might and power on social media, the reality is they have largely failed in displacing local cartels in Michoacan, as ultimately, the wars are not won with viral social media posts and photo opportunities, nor are they won with who can produce the most graphic execution videos. They essentially come down to who is better connected in a certain area, and who has the support of the locals, which is where Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion have failed in Michoacan. It's certainly not an unwinnable situation for the Jalisco based crime crew, however, they are not anywhere close to controlling the state. I happen to believe that is a predominant reason as to why CJNG have released so many execution videos stemming from Michoacan, ultimately to manufacture the image that they are slaying their rivals in battle and are winning the wars that they are participating in. However, this is far from the truth, especially in Michoacan, as well as Zacatecas and Guerrero. Speaking of graphic execution videos, in early March of 2024, a video was released that showcased an alleged CJNG member being on the receiving end of utter barbarism, allegedly perpetrated by members of El Migaladas. The victim was alleged to have been a member of a brand new CJNG faction named Fuerzas Especiales Limones, or in English, the Lemon Special Forces, as silly as that sounds. The Lemon Special Forces are a new CJNG cell created in Michoacan with the specific task of battling El Migalada's men in the region, and it's speculated they are controlled by high-ranking CJNG capo and potential successor to El Mencho, El Jardinero, aka El Diaz Flores Silva. This new elite force or armed wing of CJNG appeared on social media in early September of 2023 where they showed grainy training footage of its soldiers. Like other elite forces of CJNG, Fuerzas Especiales Limones, or FEL, also have their own designated uniforms with a distinctive logo. The logo is that of a shield that has a skull that appears above a lemon and a pair of crossed weapons, all topped with a star. According to unofficial reports, the Lemon Special Forces group bear that name because they are a faction of the CJNG that is financed through extortion of lemon producers and packers, which is also a business that the El Migalada's leader is involved in. But nevertheless, what happens in the actual video? The video itself is around 1 minute and 53 seconds in length and it details the evisceration of an alleged CJNG member who infiltrated El Migalada's and was said to have been caught sending messages to his cartel bosses. Before the execution video was released, an image of a victim was uploaded to social media showing him moments after he was caught. He seems to be tied up and has a blindfold on which has the text CJNG on it. Also, it seems that the video may have actually been originally uploaded on Twitter, now known as X, and amateur sleuths quickly worked out who the killer in the video was. It turns out that the killer goes by the alias of El Pajaraco, and an image of him unmasked was then leaked on social media. According to the translation of the Sicarios talking in the video, the CJNG member may have also been linked to the Cabiles, 
who we of course covered in our previous video. As you play the video, you are greeted with the sight of a captive, who is laying stomach first on the ground and he is surrounded by multiple armed men. He has his hands tied behind his back and he has been gagged. The video is shot in a desolate rural area during the middle of the day and you can hear the Sicarios, including the axe wielding killer, El Pajaraco, spew out cartel propaganda. El Pajaraco takes the axe, which has a distinguishable silver axe head, and then swings it over his shoulder and then down onto the back of the victim's neck, which causes a loud thud that you hear reverberate through the victim's body. The first axe blow doesn't appear to connect all that well, and it draws out a deep groan from the victim that you still hear clearly through the gag. The axe-wielding Sicario then repeatedly lifts the axe above his head before striking the victim at the back of his neck several times. The sounds continue to be that of thuds, until on one of the swings and as the axe comes down onto the victim's neck, the sound changes and instead of a thud, it turns into a wet thud. For the first few strikes, it seems that the Sicario may have actually missed the victim's neck and as a result, rendered him unconscious due to the handle of the axe hitting the back of the victim's neck and head. Almost immediately after cutting into the victim, the once silver axe head is now blood red and El Pajaraco continues to chop down with the axe until he cuts through the spinal cord. You hear a loud crunch and then the head is only held onto the body with strands of flesh. He then addresses the camera. While doing so, another man carrying a machete enters the fray and slices the strands of flesh which are holding the head onto the body until the head is completely severed. The machete wielding maniac then holds the head in his hands for a few seconds before El Pajaraco then once again takes the axe but this time begins to hack the corpse's legs off at the knees and only in two or three strikes, each of the legs are essentially severed, but once again, the man with the machete comes in and completes the job by cutting the remaining strands of flesh that are keeping the legs from being totally severed. He then picks up one of the legs and points it at the camera before making a strange squealing noise. He then dumps the legs onto the ground next to the severed head. Throughout this portion of the video, the translation is as follows. El Pajaraco, as well as another Sicario, announce the state of Michoacan belongs to the Michoacanos. This is so that you know how things are going to be here. I can also get down when it comes to committing evil, you sons of bitches. So don't bother trying to instill fear with people here. We can also resort to being evil in this area. In addition, we also kill the Jalisco gunmen, you sons of bitches. Everyone needs to be made aware of this. Keep sending more dumbasses like this individual our way. Take a good look at this dismembered head that I have within my hands. Let it serve as your fucking warning. Here lies the handiwork of your Kabiles. This just goes to show every fucking one of you. The next portion of the video has no sound and much of it is covered with text that is yet another warning to CJNG. In this part of the video, you see the man with a machete dismembering the victim's arms at the elbow. One has already been severed and it's tied to the man's other arm that the Sicario is cutting off. He takes the machete blade and cuts around the joint and through the ligaments. He then begins to hack away at the arm, severing it before holding both arms up, displaying them to the camera before dumping them in a pile along with the other body parts. The text, which is covering a lot of this video and somewhat obscuring what is going on, reads as follows. Limones, stay on your toes you sons of bitches. Everyone knows here who the fuck is in charge and will continue to rule. You made the mistake of biting the hand that fed you guys. So, for your own safety, it's best that you backstabbers brace yourselves. Stop bringing people here based on lies. We don't just talk about handling our affairs. We also put our words into action. So there we have it. Another day and another gruesome video from Mishawakan. Ever since I started this channel, Mishawakan has been a key focus of mine. And since I started the channel, 
So many new wars have kicked off, alliances have been made, some have fallen, and we remain in the same situation as we did when I first started. CJNG vs El Megaladas right now seems to be heating up, there's been a lot of graphic material released surrounding this conflict, and it shows no signs of slowing down, so we shall see what happens. Also there's been news of an alleged partnership between CJNG and Los Viagras, though I haven't quite had that confirmed, so we shall see. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it, if you can enjoy this sort of content. If you have any topic recommendations, please feel free to drop me a DM on Twitter, or now X. Link will be in the pinned comments. Also, I have a Patreon, and a video would have been uploaded this week, a bonus video. It's like a early access. So that's just been uploaded. Also, if you could follow me on Twitch, once again, all the links will be in the pinned comment below. And as always guys, thank you for the support, we are closing in on three years doing this channel. Uh, it will be three years in May, and it's been a hell of a ride, so yeah, thank you guys for always being here throughout the good, the bad and the ugly. Thank you guys very much. But anyway, as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.